like him. The quicker picker upper. Bounty picks up messes quicker, and each sheet is two times more absorbent, so you can use less. He's an eight. He's a nine. Bounty, the quicker picker upper. From novice to aficionado, find yourself here. High quality cigars plus personal customer service. Slow Burn is Waco's only mobile cigar lounge, featuring a meticulous curated collection of premium cigars. Visit our website www.slowburnwaco.com That's www.slowburnwaco.com When it comes to professional learning, teachers deserve better. From the leader in online learning, Stride brings you the Stride Professional Development Center, an on-demand library of mobile-friendly courses that gives teachers choice and flexibility, allowing them to learn anytime and anywhere. Our dynamic courses provide bite-sized learning and help educators advance their knowledge while also gaining professional development hours. It's time you take charge of your learning. Visit us today to get started. Compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot, yeah, and who the ball, ball, ball. So listen to Professor Yes Sir, yes, sir. and pay attention because he gon' teach a lesson. Yes. This is Dr. Mills inside the HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington, Charles Bishop. Mike is out on assignment. We have nothing other than Charles Bishop. Let's get into the poll ranking here. We did have some changes this week in the men, so it's a little more interesting than the other three. Um, so we'll just get into it and see what you think there. Uh, dropping out this week actually was Texas Southern Tigers, 16 and 7, 12 and 6 overall uh, as they dropped out. You see. Uh, you have Tennessee State receiving votes. It should have actually been Texas Southern Tigers at 16 and 7 as they had their loss in the CIT against Tarleton State that we talked about early. Also mm. receiving votes with Southern Jaguars 18 and 14, 12 and 6, uh, 39 points there. Let's get in the top five programs in the rankings uh, this week and let you know what's taking place. At number five, you have none other than Tennessee State Tigers at five. They jumped back in the poll. Really, if you think about the holistic part of the season, they finished at 18 and 15. Didn't close the way they wanted. They dropped them out last week when Texas Southern got hot in the tournament and closed up. But uh, what a week uh, difference a week makes as they jump in the top five, 18 and 15, 10 and 8 out of the OVC with 41 points. At number four, North Carolina Central Eagles, 18 and 13, 9 and 5, 51 points as they move up a spot. Uh, with Texas Southern dropping out, they get uh, moved up as they close out in the season uh, with 18 wins. Uh, at number three, Howard Bison, 18 and 17, nine and five. Obviously, a tough loss in the first four of the NCAA tournament, but they make the run in the MEAC and add another trophy to the trophy case as Howard Bison, the Howard University, has become a basketball program, both on the men's and women's side. Some people would say all sports trophy may be in their way is the way they have been turning around their program overall, 18 and 17, 9 and 5. Uh, good Life is good at the Mecca, 52 points as they move up a slot from being four last week. And number two, Buffalo State Spartans with a win over Alabama A&M, HBCU program, 23 and 11, 11 and 3. Four first place votes, 102 points. They rank number two. This is a program that won the regular season, uh, didn't get it done in the tournament, lost to Howard as Howard. Cuts down the championship. Obviously, Howard uh, played Delaware State in that championship game, get it done in terms of what it looks like there. Um, another thing about Norfolk State in terms of the Spartans, we say they play for a championship CIT. Should be interesting to see what that looks like as they move forward. At number one, Grambling State Tigers, 21 and 15, 14 and four, seven for first place, also 105 points. So you see this week, uh, Norfolk State added a first place vote. <laughs> Shift it away. Shift it away. <laughs> Grandma State had the regular season championship, a tournament championship, went to the NCA first four and got a big win in overtime. So they sit at the Ooh. top, but they do have that loss in the next game. Norfolk State didn't have the tournament championship, have a regular season championship, better overall record, 23. 
lost. Norfolk State ended up evening the MEAC SWAC matchup as they got it done that uh, SWAC was leading three to two in five games that were played in non conference play, if you would. You get a postseason matchup between Alabama and AM, a team that was hot, middle of the pack for the SWAC. Make sure we point that out. But did get the win over Austin A on the road? They go on the road to Norfolk State. Beat them at halftime. Norfolk State closes it, gets it done. So you have a 3-3 series there. Both of them had winning records over their HBCU programs with wins over Tennessee State by Alabama A&M, speak about them. You also had wins uh, with Norfolk State over Howard, uh, Hampton in terms of some of those mixes in the mix. And so both of them have winning records uh, when you have Central winning over a and so fascinating to see what that looks like non-conference. But my question to you, Charles, is I kind of <laughs> long gave this out, get you smiling, maybe lather you up, all the listeners out there. If Norfolk State gets it done tomorrow, wins a CIT championship, can they pull away two votes? They need to get two more. They pulled away one this week. Can they pull away two more votes, which would put them over Grambling, because that means they've taken them from Grambling. So mm. Grambling goes to Five first place votes there in terms of two. And then Norfolk State goes to six. So overall point differential, you probably would see Norfolk State taking over Bramlin. What are your thoughts? Is that possible? Is that feasible? Would you agree or disagree? Uh, if you were a voter, what would you do? Uh, I put some stock in the public. <laughs> put it I, on put the some, yeah, the I know. Because <laughs> that's tough. That's tough. I, I do put some stock into uh, the opportunity to, to hang a postseason championship banner. And that's what's on the line here for Norfolk State. Uh, say what you want, you know, how you feel about the CBI, CIT. That's that's brand recognition for a basketball program to me. I mean, when you take a look at the fact that they, they have an opportunity to do something historic here. Uh, and you know, can they pull away two first place votes from Grambling? Oh boy, that's hard because regular season championship, swag tournament championship, they're 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 in the the the, the, the mystique of March Madness. Uh, they get a, a play a play in victory or or, or uh, get a victory in the tournament. That 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 goes a long way. But I still got a team playing now. I can't overlook that. I really can't overlook that. So. Is it possible? Is it possible, Dr. Cavill, to have a split national championship in terms of uh, Dr. Cavill's final ranking? Have we ever I'm seen not it? sure how you would split it up. You would need – you've seen it before, football side, we see the split yeah. championship. You have the same number of voters. The challenge you have here is you have 11 overall voters. So you would need to get some really intriguing math with Howard falling some spots. So it would work out that one may have more first place votes, but they would get points based on being ranked lower somewhere in the poll rankings, which I think would be a challenge this late in the season. But feasibly uh, with the math, I guess I got to say it is possible, but I doubt it in terms of the point rankings here that that would take place. Interesting when you uh, think about that. And you said hanging banners. A couple of years ago, we followed Texas Southern and Hampton as they yeah. made final four runs in the CIT uh, in terms of that. So let you know uh, that programs, HBC programs, have made some runs here. Uh, but to get to the championship game, we haven't seen that in this young CIT uh, tournament, if you would. So it's fascinating to see that that's in place now. You never had a team that come in with the number one seed. So they got the bye. Uh, so – in fact, they're only playing two games. That may bother some voters out there. Uh, but with that being said, let me go with the lab listeners. What do you think in terms of that? Legendary joiner with Hampton uh, made their run. He retires this year. And then uh, you see uh, now Norfolk State has a chance to play for the championship CIT tournament. Fascinating to see what that looks like and see what people think. I want to know during this break, let me know. Uh, would you support Norfolk State in regards to them? Uh, how would you vote in the poll rankings? Where would you go? Would you have Grandma State number one in terms of what they did with the body of the season and the late season run? Or Norfolk State 
who would you have in terms of championship? And we got followers out there from Grand. We got followers oh, out there from uh, Buffalo State. So I know where go. they're going to go. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. Here so go. I just, I'm just fascinated and interested. I want to see what the people think. With that being said, let's take a last break. We'll come back with the other side. Let Charles do his thing. Ask the question of the day. Many people have enjoyed that, so we'll keep that going. But that means, say, let's take our last break, come back on the other side. I want to see what some of the people type as we are taking our break. Let me know your thoughts. I'm going to look down and see what you're saying uh, in the lab. If you think all pads are exactly the same, think again. This is Always Ultra Thins reinvented with the Always Triple Protection System. This pad wicks gushes 90% faster, absorbs even more so you can feel dry, and locks odors in. Rethink your pad for up to 100% leak-free and odor-free comfort with the totally reinvented Always Ultra Thins. This is always like never before. The Cuvée Group is a Florida-based marketing and training consulting firm. We help businesses communicate to their target audience and engage them in conversation. We also help to expand their audiences, which will ultimately result in growth for those organizations. In addition to being a certified constant contact specialist, my colleagues and I are also certified in John Maxwell Leadership Principles. We use these proven principles to conduct workshops, training, and private coaching sessions for individuals and companies looking to take things to the next level. Contact us to schedule a free consultation. Issues today, don't delay, call Cuvée. As technology continues to bring changes to the world of education, it's time we also reimagine teacher professional development. Gone are the days of one-size-fits-all learning that can only be accessed at a specific time and place. The Stride PD Center is an on-demand library of mobile-friendly courses that allow educators to learn anytime and anywhere. Our dynamic courses provide bite-sized learning and help educators advance their knowledge while also gaining professional development hours. The best professional development plans are those that include a level of flexibility and choice for educators. Whether you're a teacher, school, or district, visit us today to take charge of your learning. Compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot, yeah, and who the ball, the ball. So listen to Professor Yesa yes, and pay attention because he gonna teach a lesson. This is Dr. Dills inside HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington, Charles Bishop. Professor Bishop, go ahead and go away. Ask your question of the day. Yeah, well, the last discussion we were having was a perfect segue uh, into the question of the day in terms of uh, how much relevance uh, do we put on uh, tournaments other than uh, the NCAA uh, tournament, uh, looking at the CBI, the CIT. Uh, we're seeing our HBCU teams making deep runs into these tournaments. Uh, so the question becomes, uh, are these tournaments, how, how relevant are they uh, in terms of the psyche of our HBCU family? Great question there. I'm going to say this before I give a full framework of the discussion. Let's play this video. Seven seconds, back to Davis. Five seconds, Tucker, kick out, Brooke home for the win from long distance, from long distance, Malia Brooke home knocks it down. Dr. Ville's inside HBC Sports Lab, Charles, I think that's evidence. As you see in a Pat Corbett arena and you saw the fans that were there, mostly students, how engaged they were. And for folks that don't know, that was the WNIT. A&T uh, won their second round game. And as we said earlier in the poll rankings, they will continue to play. And so I think that's evidence uh, that if you're in the basketball business and you're talking about growing your fan base, what you start to understand is the importance, how fans love the camaraderie, the family that we talk about that's unique to HBCUs, general and sports fandom, uh, as you talk about, and how people celebrate victories. People don't necessarily know the nuance in regards of the value. Obviously, NCAA is in your face all the time, the March Madness tournament. Uh, but at the end of the day, the value of, of winning championships at various levels 
um, or and various tournaments outweighs the fact that you shouldn't play in it in terms of understanding what that means. Now, all of those fans that were connected, they're going to remember uh, that they were in the building when a t had a dramatic win in a postseason event. Mm. Um, and people are not going to worry about that much about whether it's WNIT, NCAA. Uh, those for the general fan base is not something they really recognize, CIT, CBI, but they do understand the value of how they felt and how they can tell other fans that I was there. I was on the sideline. That's me jumping on the, I was on TV celebrating that our women got it done. So I think it is immeasurable when you're understanding marketing and creating the brand recognition of taking advantage when your teams go to these tournaments and celebrating what that looks like. So the back end question to that is, and, and, I'm, and I know every team has a unique situation in regards to uh, whether they should accept a uh, postseason invite to play into uh, these uh, tournaments. Uh, but, what you're basically saying is uh, the brand value to the, to the school is, is too great an opportunity to not or to decline an invitation into the WNIT, into the NIT, into the CBI, CIT. Right. So I think you reframe it. A lot of times coaches put everything on the fact that you're going to look at winning a regular season championship. Then obviously it's about the postseason tournament. And so if you do not win those, a lot of times people see it as a loss. I think you reframe and say here at this program, we chase championships. Mm. We chase championships, postseason participation. So whether this is a regular season championship, tournament championship, NCAA, Division One, Division Two, NIA championship, CBI, CIT, WNIT, NIT, WCBI, I don't care what you call it, HBCU tournament. We chase championships. So we connect winning with our pedigree of a program in terms of the brand recognition of postseason participation. So we're going to always look to participate. So you plan at the beginning of the season and budget to the fact that we're going to look at postseason and reward you for a great season. And not only we're going to reward our players, we're going to reward our fans and we're going to do as much as possible to get home games mm. so we can reward our fans for a great regular season. We can reward our fans for a um, and players for a great reward our coaches for a great season. And we do not measure just greatness by the fact of whether you win a championship, the fact that you had uh, 20 wins or winning record on your way to chasing those championships are just as important because now it prepares you for the next year as you roll over and you start brand marking that this is another season and the continuation of our great program continues in terms of we chasing championships at various years, whether it was NIA championships in the 50s, 60s, 70s, NIA, NCAA championship division twos, in the 70s and the 80s, or whether that is Division One championships in terms of conference, regular seasons, or postseason wins in the NCAA tournament at the Division One level. Men's and women's, we chase championships. That's important. That's important here, and that's in, uh, important for programs to hear, uh, especially uh, when you talk about the retention of athletes and things of that nature, uh, that you have that tagline that they understand that, you know, this is – we're a cut above. We chase championships. I love that. Yeah, and if you think about it, you really can do that in multiple sports. So you find a way uh, to brand yourself where you are. Sometimes if you're not careful and you're always looking to the nexus uh, of comparing yourself to everybody else, sometimes you need to start for your greatness of where you are. And then you build upon that to the next level in terms of moving further and you find ways to further support yourself in that mechanism. So I thank you for that question because I think contextually at this time right now, it's really timely and important. And hopefully that video connect with the fans out there and understanding what we're saying. With that being said, let's close it up so we can get into this NIA championship game with Langston. Uh, thank you for listening to Inside the HBCU Sports Lab. Make sure you share our podcast 
with your friends and colleagues. I am Dr. Kenyatta Khalil, the Dean of HBC Sports, coming from inside the lab in the College of HBC Sports with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. Again, I want to thank you for listening, Dr. Khalil, inside the HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. Every Tuesday, Thursday, right here at 6 o'clock Central Standard Time, we look forward to Thursday as we give you the latest news and we'll give you an update of who cut down those nets. Follow me, Dr. Kenyatta Caville, on Twitter, of X, formerly known as Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. That's D-R-K-N-Y-A-T-T-A-C-A-V-I-L. Inside the HBC Sports Lab 1 on Facebook uh, and YouTube inside the HBC Sports Lab. On Thursday, we'll get in a little ping of the bats. Baseball. Texas South took two out of three from Prairie View, putting up 13 runs in game three. Uh, uh, the Diamondbacks get down there. Jackson State is hot. They took two the first weekend from Alabama State, following up, bringing out the brooms. Uh, but Bethune Cookman took two out of three from FAMU. Just yeah. Just this in. Gremlin is undefeated. Man. Baseball is being played. It's time to get on the dime. And let's not do that softball is yeah. uh, the ladies out uh, there doing their things as well. What yeah, would you big, say, Charles? Big weekend series as the G-Men. They come to Houston uh, over uh, Easter weekend. So I'm expecting McGregor to be packed this weekend. So looking forward to it. And they start early. That's on Thursday for everybody in this area that you don't know. You've probably seen that before. Easter weekend, no Sunday games, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Fascinating to be out there at McGregor Park. Uh, with that being said, dream big. Until you move forward, we will talk with you soon. Charles? Of course. Roy? Lecture. Dismissed.